Hey guys, Wilson from On The Move here, and I've got a maintenance video for us today. So we're gonna take care of a few maintenance things that we need to do before we leave on a big trip. We're planning a, a pretty big trip this summer, probably gonna do about 8,000 miles. And I wanna make sure that we can prevent any kind of mechanical issues um, that we possibly can. We're gonna start with our bearings today. So we're gonna do a um, bearing repack in this video, show you how to do that. Pretty easy job as long as you're physically able to remove your tires. Um, this is a great chance to do a couple things, inspect your tires, check for any bearing issues, check your axles, check all of your spring hangers, and just do a little brake maintenance as well. You might catch something here while you're repacking the bearings that could save you a lot of time and a lot of issues as you're traveling. Stay with us and let's check out how to repack our bearings. So let's start with what we need here. So I like a nice impact wrench. I have bought a DeWalt and this is just a, it's a nice tool to have with you as you travel. Of course you have to have the right adapters and then your right sockets as well. Uh, a torque wrench is essential. Get those lug nuts tied, rubber gloves, brake cleaner parts cleaner because I like to use this for the bearings itself, shop towels, and then a couple of basic hand tools uh, will help you out. Screwdriver, a pair of vice grips, um, maybe a pair of pliers. It depends on if you have a uh, cotter pin or if you have a different type pin that holds that um, nut onto your axle. Uh, a pair of gloves, and I really like the Lucas oil products. I, I don't get any uh, money from Lucas, we, but this is a pretty high quality product, 540 degree drop point, red and tacky grease. So I've got a, a grease gun for this. I recommend a good grease gun, something like this. And then I like to hand pack my bearings most of the time. And so I like a good can of grease that I can use. This is a great chance to inspect everything while you're down here. So you've got your hangers, you've got your springs, um, you've got a bushing here, and there's actually a grease um, nipple on the bushing here on the shackle. And so we wanna make sure that we grease that while we're here as well. Um, we're, we're looking for anything, does it turn? You know, number one, that's one of my things I like to do. As long as that drum is turning pretty good, you know, I can, feel confident I don't need to replace a bearing, but I'm gonna inspect the bearings as well as I'm doing this. I wanna make sure I can avoid any issues traveling. One of our worst feelings is going down the road and you know, you're having an issue while you're out and about. And, and today you just don't know how quickly somebody can get to you. And that's one reason to be prepared, try to help yourself out, try to be ready for any emergencies. So my next step is to remove the cover here. So what I'm gonna do is take this hammer and I'm going to just kind of loosely tap on this. Kind of an outward angle. Now you can see that um, the lip came off there. I'm gonna take my little flathead screwdriver. Just gonna pry that out. Don't want to bend it, don't want to break anything here because my goal is to not replace any more than I have to. Okay, first sign, I, I like this. I can see red grease, so that means there's still good grease in there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and repack all these bearings anyway. I'm gonna get all that grease out and I'll show you how. All right, next step here, pry out that clip, this clip is what holds your castle nut in. We want to put that um, somewhere safe. I like to use, I like to use something to keep all of my parts in and somewhere I'm going to be able to wash these. I'm going to use some cleaner to wash all that old grease off. Next we're going to remove this castle nut and there shouldn't be a lot of tension on there. In fact it just turned just by me turning enough hand pressure here and that's all it should do. 
if it turn if it takes much more pressure that castle nut was on there really too tight and you're probably causing a lot of damage to your bearings and possibly to your spindle on your axle as well and i would rather not replace any of those parts by the way if you feel like this job is too much you know get a pro to do it for you uh, usually any kind of repair shop can take care of this for you once the castle nut is off there is a washer here and that washer is usually going to be stuck to your bearing screwdriver kind of pried that loose Got a little dark grease in there, so yeah, this grease needs to be replaced. All right, my next step is I'm going to actually remove the entire drum, the bearings on the inside. This outside one will fall out if I'm not careful, so I want to make sure I don't let that fall to the ground as I remove the drum. So I'm just going to pull, slide that drum off. You can see how easy that drum comes off, and it should come off that easy. Uh, this should not be seized up. If it is, you have a different sort of problem. So we're just going to slide this off, and that first bearing is going to pop out, and there it is right there. So I'm going to put that in my parts washer. You can buy a real parts washer if you want. Um, I think a box here, a little piece of Tupperware is great for me. We're also going to inspect our brakes here really well. We're going to clean all of this brake dust off, all this, and you can see there's grease here on the magnet. Um, we've got some grease on the back side of the spindle, and we want to make sure that we clean all of this up uh, before we reassemble everything. We also want to inspect our brake pads here. We've got pretty good thickness on the brake pads. If you have any doubt about your brake pads go ahead and replace them you can buy the pads online i'll put a link for you guys to take a look at those um, and the other side you can actually buy this entire assembly cut your wires unbolt this from the axle and replace the entire brake assembly and that's really easy to do all right we're going to go ahead and wipe away all this grease shop towels are a must for this job and it is messy get you a can of uh, orange cleaner as well that way you can clean up your hands really nice and easy because this brake dust will get all over it have a good trash bag around you too want to try to get off as much of this dirt and all this grit back here as we can so our seal gets back on there really nice buy extra brake parts cleaner a uh, great thing to have on hand it'll help you get this job done pretty quick one other thing you can do is you can buy one of these packers and it has a grease nipple fitting here and you can actually put your bearings between and it'll pack them for you pretty well. You do need to kind of hand check them, make sure they're okay. And uh, that the grease got all the way through the bearing. That's the real important part. Um, so we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but this could be a helpful tool if you want to use it. So I'm really glad that I'm doing this right now because if you guys can see this, there's a lot of grease that has come out of the seal back here. That means that seal has weakened um, and probably would fail before too much longer. So I wanna make sure I check that bearing really well uh, just to make sure there's no damage. And I'll show you how to do that. But this, we're gonna remove this seal that's on the inside of the drum and then we'll be able to pull that bearing out. So you can buy a seal puller. Um, I will put a link in the description below. I take my pliers and if I can work those under there, I can typically pop that seal loose and it comes out relatively easy. Good thing is there's a lot of good grease in there. So that tells me that that back bearing has not gotten overheated even though there's been a leak in that seal. Back to our drum, we're just going to remove this bearing 
put it in our parts washer. We're gonna clean up all this grease inside and we'll use brake parts cleaner on the inside of this drum as well to make sure we get all of this grit, dirt, um, just clean it up so it's almost like new. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inspect these races. On the inside, I'm gonna make sure there's no grooves, no damage. They're seated well. I actually replaced these last year and replaced all the bearings last season before we traveled. So I don't expect a whole lot of wear on these and they're both clean. And you can tell this parts cleaner really gets the grease out of here, cleans it up well. Next step is to go ahead and clean our bearings here, clean all of our parts. So I'm gonna take a towel and I'm gonna wipe as much grease off as I can and then I'm gonna use my parts cleaner to squirt out all of the old grease. You can see there's some pretty good red grease and then there's some black grease in here which that black grease has gotten overheated a little. So I wanna make sure I inspect the outer bearing um, real carefully to make sure it's okay. If you have any doubts about your bearings, go ahead and replace them. Um, you know, for about 25 bucks a set, depending on which ones you buy, you can buy uh, Timkins, uh, American made for about uh, $20 each. You can buy uh, the Chinese made versions, and that's what I have in here. Um, I've not had any problems, but I make sure that I grease them, I take care of them, I repack every single year. Um, and so far, I've never had a bearing go bad. So just a little maintenance will typically take care of those issues. And if in doubt, go ahead and replace. Again, as you get all these parts off, one of the keys to making sure this job's done right is inspect, inspect, inspect. Inspect the spindle, make sure there's no grooves. Check right where the bearings are gonna be, right along in here. Feel for any kind of indentations, any marks, okay, here as well. We wanna make sure that there's no damage to the spindle. Um, if you're not sure, have it inspected by a professional mechanic and they can tell you if anything is wrong. Inspect your brake pads. Our brake pads look uh, pretty good at this point. They've got still got a lot of thickness left on them, and our drums look pretty good. Uh, the magnet has cleaned up real well, and we've not had any problems with our brakes, so I'm happy with these at this point. I may actually replace brakes next season just because of the age of those. 
um, but we'll make that decision next year. Now comes the fun part, so we're going to pack our bearings, and again, you can use a tool for this, buy one of these cheap bearing packers and squeeze the grease through. You still need to manually push some more grease into it, but I'm going to pack mine by hand, and it is a little messy process, but a pair of gloves will save you a lot of time. I've actually got both of my axles on this side, um, both sets of bearings off, so I'm going to do those all at one time, which I think is the smart way to do it. You'll save a mess and you'll save some materials as well doing it this way and make it quicker as well once you do one it makes it a whole lot quicker uh, with the others you'll figure a system out that works for you I'm get a wad of grease and I'm gonna start pushing this grease down into these channels and this is the messy part but I'm gonna have to push and push and push that grease until I get grease coming out the other side. I shouldn't have any dirty grease coming through because I've already cleaned it out with my parts cleaner. But you're just gonna have to take your time and work that grease into the bearings. Sometimes you can take and you can use the palm of your hand just to push that grease in. You can actually already see the grease popping out the other side. So we work from the wide side to the inner side, or the outer side of the bearing to the inner side, and we're just going to keep pushing all that grease as hard as we can into the bearing. And you can see it, it's all coming out that other side. We're going to turn that bearing, so tighten up the fingers in there so those bearings can roll across that grease. You'll see that grease kind of pop through and then we want to pack even more grease in to make sure everything is completely covered inside. You can see when I work this grease from the bottom up, it's going to push through. You can see it kind of like a riffle right there. You know it's popping all the way through that bearing once you see that. So once you've got all of those covered, your bearing is greased and we'll put a little more grease onto the spindle itself just to make sure everything is greased up well okay all right so i'm helping my father-in-law out with his bearings too this is like bearings weekend and he got a little different device and decided to pack them um, with uh, this little pump type device instead of hand packing so we're going to see how it works and i'll put a link in the description below um, he seems to like it, and so let's take a look at it. All right, how's it work? All right, so you place the bearing tapered down into the cup, and then you have the little plunger piece that you screw on till it's tight. Then all you got to do, I'll put it on a little more solid surface, is you. I don't know if you can see, but the grease popped right up through that tapered side. And so you know you have uh, clean grease all the way through. You preload your grease in this particular device in the bottom. And as you push that plunger down, it pushes that grease back through, just like I would hand pack it, but the, but the uh, device does it for you. So you can see here where the grease has popped right out of the top, the widest part of the bearing and now you just have to grease the outside and just turn it around in your hand and we're done with that bearing yep all right so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to reassemble everything and so you do need to buy new seals and i'll put a link uh here for these uh, these are 7,000 pound axles and the, the seals are really cheap but you've got to put a new one on because these do fail over time. They have a rubber insert um, and a spring in there and that just loses tension over time and so you'll have grease pop out of the back side as I showed you earlier in the video. So my bearings are greased. What I'm going to do is the race I've already inspected. I want to make sure there's no pitting inside of there. They're really really clean so you've got a race on the inside and on the outside here 
and we're gonna go ahead and just run one little layer of grease real carefully I don't want to put too much you don't want to put a lot of excess grease in here because then it just flies around make sure we keep it off of our drum now we're gonna put our bearing in that's already pre-greased And if you're seeding a new race, there is a tool for that, and I'll put a link in the description. I didn't have to reseed any grease, any uh, races, or install any new races today because I did all of that last year. Now we're going to put our seal. We're going to lightly tap. These are exact fits, so they're kind of a booger to get in sometimes. But once you get it started, there it goes. And once you hear that ping all the way around, you heard the different tone and the noise then you know that grease seal is seated in place I'm gonna wipe this excess grease off of the outside of the seal and now we are ready to reinstall our drum We also have a race right here. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease all the way around. Again, not excessive amounts of grease, but enough to make sure there's plenty of grease in there. And then I'm gonna pump one squirt of grease through this zerk just to make sure we've got clean grease in it as well. So we've got a, a dewasher here. It's gonna slide right over. Make sure you clean all these parts really well before you reinstall. It's gonna push up firm. And we've got our castle nut that we're going to install. All right, so as we're reassembling everything, we've done everything back kind of in the reverse order. And we've tightened this down. You'll have to check your axle and your manufacturer's recommendations. So while you're tightening that down to 50 pounds, it does recommend that you turn the drum. That way everything's seated correctly. So we've got a nice flow. We don't have any wobble in that. Now we're going to put our clip back on. It's a D-clip and it's just going to go right into place. You may have to line, you may have to adjust the castle nut. But that went right back on uh, with no problem. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put our grease cap on. And we're going to just tap nice and lightly, kind of like what we did with our seal. And now we're back into place. Just take a cloth, wipe any excess grease. Everything sounds good, looks good. We'll reinstall our tire. We'll do that back to uh, manufacturer specs. We're gonna go ahead and pump in just a little bit of grease into that easy lube axle. And while we do this, we wanna turn. There we go. seal back on all right for the rain catches us we're gonna get our tires back on I've already got one in place I'm gonna set this one we're gonna hand start our lugs
So again, we got our torque wrench here and we're gonna alternate back and forth, follow the tire or axle manufacturer's recommendations here. And we're gonna tighten these down. Until we get that click. So we'll do all of our lugs and then we'll be good to go. So this is a, a relatively easy job to do, but the physical part might get you a little bit, okay? But if you can change a tire, you can change out your bearings or you can repack your bearings. So I hope this uh, video will help you guys out. Um, hopefully it'll save you some money too because it is kind of pricey to get somebody to pack these for you. So I'll see you guys next time out on the Muve.